In this film, we're going to explore how and why the moon changes shape and moves across the sky. But first of all, we need to establish our direction to find the moon. Now, here at the observatory in Greenwich, I can use our planetarium cone to find my direction. So ahead of me is north and behind me is south, and this is the way that the cone is aligned. And that means that over on my right is east and west is over here on my left. Now, the moon appears to be in the southeast and we can see a waxing crescent moon. This means that the right hand side of the moon is lit up. Now, the reason why the moon is visible at all is because it reflects sunlight. So if the right hand side of the moon is lit up, that must mean that the sun must be to the right hand side over in the west. Now, the best way to find the sun without directly looking at it and damaging your eyesight is to look for your shadow. And I can see that my shadow is over here on the right. So the sun must be in the complete opposite direction over here in the west. Now, the reason why we see the moon move across the sky and we see it rise over in the east, we see it reach its highest point in the south and it sets in the west just like the sun, is because of the Earth's rotation. And that whole motion takes about 24 hours. But another effect that we see is the fact that the moon undergoes phases, it changes shape. And that's because the moon is also in orbit around the Earth and that process takes 27.3 days. So let's go inside and explore how we get the phases of the moon. OK, so here we have a model to represent the sun, the Earth and the moon. So over here on my left, I have a spotlight that represents the sun. Over on my right, I have a globe to represent the Earth. And in my hands, I have a smaller ball to represent the moon. And in the classroom, you can use basketballs or footballs or any type of ball to represent the Earth and the moon. And if you want, you can even use your pupils to demonstrate the Earth-Moon system. And for your light source, you can use an ordinary torch like this one. OK, so let's start off with the moon in this position in between the Earth and the sun. Now, from the perspective of the Earth, you can see the unlit side of the moon, and we call this phase a new moon. Now, if I take it round in an anti-clockwise fashion, like this, you should be able to see from the Earth the right-hand side of the moon lit up, and we call this a first quarter phase because I've covered one quarter of the moon's orbit. Now, if I take it round over here, we can see a full moon. Um, and I have actually lifted the moon slightly. Uh, and this is what happens in space. The moon's orbit is tilted, um, so it is able to receive sunlight. And from the perspective of the Earth, you would see the whole of the moon lit up. And we call this a full moon. And I keep taking it round. So we've now covered three quarters of its orbit. And from the Earth, you would see the left-hand side of the moon lit up. We call this phase a last quarter. And we can keep going round in anticlockwise fashion back to the beginning again where we have a new moon.